Some call it the red door of truth because it doesn't lie and because it's such an important tool in the construction of high performance buildings. I'm talking about the blower door, of course, and the blower door test for air tightness. Why is air tightness something we want in buildings? It's actually one of the most, if not the most powerful ways to raise a building's energy performance, to make it energy efficient. A continuous air barrier acts like a windbreaker, stopping unconditioned outside air from penetrating to the inside and stopping conditioned inside air from leaking to the outside. But just as important, airtight buildings are durable buildings. That's because airtight building assemblies stop the air leaks that carry airborne vapor into those assemblies and that allow bulk water to be driven into them. We know that moisture inside building assemblies is bad news, leading to mold and rot and building failure. Air tightness helps keep that moisture at bay. And let's not forget our health, the health of the people inside buildings. When we create an airtight building envelope, we combine it with filtered, balanced, mechanical ventilation to provide filtered fresh air 24 seven. This setup, this one-two punch of an air barrier and ventilation system is especially valuable during times of intense outdoor pollution, like during a wildfire smoke event. The air barrier prevents the smoky air from seeping in through walls, roof, or window and door connections. So the only outside air that enters the building comes through the filtered ventilation system where smoke and pollutants can be filtered out, particularly when equipped with MERV-16 and carbon filters. So we can exhaust stale air from our buildings and bring in fresh, clean air, even when the air outside is nasty. The blower door test allows us to test a project's air tightness at key points during construction, giving the construction team the intel they need to find and fix any weaknesses in the air barrier and ensure that the efficiency, durability, and indoor air quality benefits that I just mentioned are realized in the final product. Let's join Michael Ingui and Kevin Brennan down at the Engine 16 project in Manhattan as Kevin conducts the first blower door test of that building so far. They're in the midst of an ambitious retrofit of an historic firehouse into passive house apartments. So this test is really important. Uh, we are at Engine 16 on a fun day. Well, more fun for the architect than it is for the, for the installer, Kevin Brennan here. Um, but we're running the blower door test and we're doing an initial blower door test. The blower door is a piece of equipment that has been around since the 70s. A unique tool to test a building to know how leaky it is. Um, uh, the air leakage rate of a building is directly coincides with how much energy it's going to use. It also helps with indirect quality and many other things. But this is the tool we use to pressurize or depressurize the building and then find the leaks when we can still get to them. We're at a point now where we're like 99% complete as far as the air barrier being continuous throughout the building from the top to the bottom. So this will be the first time we're ever getting pressure on the building so that we can find the leaks, but also we're actually gonna get some numbers and to know how leaky it is. So it's a two and a half year project. I've been working on this project for painstakingly for that time and it's the first time I'm gonna actually see the results beyond just visual inspection. So, want to go inside? Let's Run do it. Fan? All right. Let's do it. So, we're here. This is the blower door. The blower door is a pretty simple machine. All it comes down to is that we have a frame that is adjustable. It goes into the rough opening of the door frame. It gets set in place with the cams, which extends it in with these nice little gaskets on the side. And then we have the shroud, which is just a cloth that goes across that makes it airtight, it's flexible, and then the blower door sits in the hole. Then the other part of the equipment is a calibrated fan that knows the orifice sizes, and then the magic behind this is the manometer. The manometer just reads pressure, and then the algorithm and the calculations on the inside of the, the manometer help us to know what the flow rate is. So if we know the size of the hole, the pressure of that going across the fan, then we can say how many cubic feet per minute are going through the fan. So knowing the orifice size and the, and the pressure, then we can figure out the rate or the, the amount of air going through the fan. You guys ready? Let's do it. So this is the chemical smoke stick. You can see when I puff it, just a little bit of smoke 
and it's the same buoyancy as air, right? So when I puff it, just a little bit of smoke comes out and then I can see where it goes. So when I'm checking for leaks, I'm checking the seams in the corners, checking to see where, if anything's happening. Like you can see here, I can see that the smoke is going in there. All right, so that means I gotta deconstruct that and figure out what's happening there. Maybe take some of this off. And I would just be checking all the seams, making sure that none of the smoke is going in. Just be painstakingly thorough. All right, so here's a good example of, of a leak. I didn't press the seam, but it's obviously going in. So the actual final test is a average of pressurization and depressurization. So you get two numbers, two sets of numbers. So one is the pressurization set, and then the other one is the depressurization set. And the reason you do that is because this is a tilt and turn door, a tilt and turn window, right? So it tilts in like this, okay? So when the building's being pressurized like it is right now, as you can see, the smoke's going out. Now the pressure is engaging these gaskets, right? So now the pressure of the fan is engaging these gaskets. So now we know that it's tighter. When we depressurize the building, the fan is gonna be sucking the air and it's gonna be disengaging these gaskets. And then we would check with the smoke to see if it's happening. So some windows and doors open in, some windows and doors open out, some uh, some sort of like louvers will be activated or deactivated based on the pressure. So based on that, the science of it is do two tests and then take an average between the two. That one fan, you hear it? <laughs> that one fan is truly pressurizing the whole building where it sucks that window closed. It's pretty amazing what one fan can do and it's why it can be so effective even on a building this size. So the blower door is at the top of the building, seven stories up, one simple blower door test. And you wonder like, how can you really pressurize a building like that? It's pressurizing it so much that it sucked this door closed. So it really does work. It's great to test it. The blower door really does a great job at really pressurizing things so you can really find all these holes. We're at 1.2. Uh, how many more days of work do you think you got? Probably two, two more days of work, I'd say. You know, with a few guys on site, chasing leaks, patching in the little pieces, making the repairs. Um, uh, so I think we're in striking distance. Great, and then we're, we're hitting our numbers. You guys saw where some of the openings were. Pretty obvious, a lot of them are where they're still either doing work or they've purposely opened up um, items because they're, they're doing work today. Um, thank you, this is huge. Um, so what's nice about this for our office and uh, Kevin and, and the contractor, which is R. Sutton, this is a, a Buildings of Excellence project um, uh, awarded by NYSERDA. It's a cool firehouse in New York City being converted to residential. And the fact that we can complete it to this level, um, it makes, uh, makes us all pretty proud. So thank you and thanks for the work. As Michael mentioned, this first blower door test measured an air tightness of 1.2 air changes per hour at 50 pascals of pressure, or 1.2 ACH50. That means the full volume of air inside the building will cycle through the building envelope 1.2 times per hour when under 50 pascals of pressure. The Enerfit standard, or Passive House Institute's retrofit standard, requires an air tightness of 1.0 ACH50 so they've already almost hit the mark. Throughout the retrofit, they'll continue to improve the envelope, test it using the blower door as a diagnostic tool, and dial in the air tightness so that the final test hits that 1.0 target. Let's wish them luck. By the way, for a quick explanation of what Passive House is all about, delivered in under four minutes, check out this video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>